Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with Michael Hutchins from the band In Excess. All right, so some of you have requested this previously, so thanks so much for your patience. It's been a bit. Yeah, I'm channeling him now in March of 2021, the very end of March. You probably will see this in like April if you're watching the channel. I'll probably release it sometime in April, but I just, this morning I was running an errand and right before I was literally in the car and I had a, I always have a notebook like just right next to me here. And I have it in my car. I have one in my car, I brought it in the house because I wrote a couple of names down of people that I, it's time to channel. I'm good to channel. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I know of the band In Excess. Um, that was something that I would have danced to back in the day. And so I understand from the requests or comments that I've gotten previously that Michael Hutchins' um, death was something that was controversial. And you guys know, if you watch Above Life Channel, I'm not a super big fan of controversy. So I try to stay away from that stuff. But when I felt his energy, when I, his name kind of came into my, my mind, I felt like there, it was important to talk about the context of not just mental health, but the world, I guess, is kind of how he's making me feel. So I'm gonna bring his energy in so you can kind of feel it. He's pretty, matter of fact, he's kind of quieter. Um, his, his voice is a little more, he's a little more reserved. He like literally leans forward to grab like a cup of coffee to drink, to drink some coffee to kind of pep himself up or wake himself up a bit is how it feels kind of. And to answer the inevitable questions I'm going to get, because I will get questions because you made that gesture, I will get questions about how can spirits drink coffee? They can't drink coffee. Okay, there's no body, but it's a metaphysical thing. It's a symbolism thing. It's a way for a he and I to relate. So he did that sort of like as a hello, like a handshake or that kind of thing. So he says, I've drank, I've had plenty of coffee in my time, he says. He kind of just looks down a little bit and he kind of punches over a little bit and he's kind of sitting with, um, kind of rubbing one of his knees a little bit, leaning forward a little bit, kind of just very um, unassuming. Like he doesn't feel like this big, huge personality. He's just kind of this, he's in this mellow state energetically is how I feel. I'm not, I don't have any expectations because I wasn't a mega fan or anything. I just, I knew of the band and from the viewers at Above Life Channel, I know that there's some controversy around your transition and such. So why are we talking now? It's like I find myself like literally doing his kind of stand here, like leaning on his, his knee and stuff. Um, why are we talking? Is there a significance to this time? It feels like this matters. March, um, spring, March. There's something about that. Um, um, could be somebody's birthday, an anniversary, a wedding date, um, a birthday, a birthday, a birthday. Um, maybe not his, maybe somebody that matters to him, or it could be a birth date, album date, release date, um, signing a big contract energy. So I kind of feel something big, like a big contract, a big thing, March. And it might be ending of March because I see literally, so today is like the 20th. Is it the first day of spring today? 20th. I literally see like 21st, the 21st, energy of the 21st. So I'm not sure. If you're a fan, go ahead and put that in the comments below. I, I want to make sure I give you a platform for our conversation. So what is the, he's like, I want to make, he's like making me, he's making me feel like, I want to make my presence known because of the time. The time it is, the times, the times. He's saying something about these times. Is there a song that he talks about um, these times or a time, a different time, these times? Cause he's saying that and he's making me feel like, 
there's a lot of subdued energy around him in the, the, the field of his energy. Um, how do I describe you? How do I describe this? I want to say quiet, reserved, but that's not, he's saying it's, I'm very much in, to myself. I'm in myself. I'm too much in my head, he says, but it's not really your mind. He's like, the thoughts aren't what's making me crazy. It's the feeling. It's the whatever's behind the thoughts. He's making me feel like it's not his thoughts that's making him crazy. It's the feelings behind the thoughts or something behind the thoughts, like the past, the past. Um, and he's showing me, clearly there's been some drug abuse or drug use in his time because he's showing me that bad experiences, bad trips is what he says, um, with things where everything's just dark and it's, you know, and he said, it, he says, um, it's not so much the dark because then there's quiet. I mean, the quiet is, is not bad, he says, but if it lasts too long, then it can't be good. That's really profound. The dark creates quiet that can be like, at first it's like you welcome it, like it's a good thing, and then all of a sudden it becomes, uh, you're not really sure how long, there's no time, there's no, there's just like this abyss, he says, this abyss. He says, that's not a healthy place to be. And he's showing me being put into these different like extremes with drugs. I'm going to say drugs because he, he uses the term drug, drugs. Um, but he's also showing me like alcohol, like mixing things, obviously not healthy. Um, but he's saying it, it starts, it started out rather, he must, I wonder if he had an addiction because it feels like it started out rather not harmless or innocent, but he's like, you know how it does. You just, you kind of, you know, you're on a high, you feel good. You just um, had this awesome experience and then you're celebrating and, you know, you're having alcohol, which is actually depressant. And then you want a, st a stimulant to get back up again. And he's like, he's making me see that there's this like cocktail variety of experiences that he had. And it feels like it's from fame, like that the, the, not the pressure, he doesn't say pressure, the, the presence of this, you're, you can almost touch it, he says, you can almost touch this like, it's almost like this big, gold, like he literally shows me this picture of this image of a black, like leather jacket, black pants that are like leather pants, no shirt. And then he shows me this like glowing circle in front of me, like a big disc that's yellow and you push it and that's like it releases everything like all of a sudden there's this euphoria this like perfect everything's perfect and he says um and he's he's he's, he's there's pieces there's pockets you guys here so i'm gonna apologize right now because it's disjointed this will be disjointed because i'm seeing other things he shows me this you know it's almost like i'm out of this world like totally not here anymore and then he shows me this feeling. That's the feeling. Feeling. He showed me fame. It kind of brings you. He said it kind of pushes you into this place where you don't even know. You don't really know who you are. Like there's this image of you that that you also buy into. He says that you also see, and you know you have all these opportunities, but you also just feel like a regular guy and can't it, it's hard to differentiate who you are and you feel like different people separate people he's saying separate people and, and when that split starts to happen it feels like um, he says you can't really then you're either on this side or this side he's making he's almost making me feel bipolar energies like either you're this or you're that like there's not an in-between and then he, he shows me like literally a, like a line down his body in his head he's showing me his head a lot a lot with his head and but he's saying it's not the thoughts it's the like the feelings the emotions the this energy push of emotion emotion and then then the thoughts after um he's saying something about his dad like i don't know if he had a good relationship with his dad or what that was about but he's showing me an image of his dad 
father figure dad dad I feel like father not I don't know there's something weird about the family dynamics let's say it that way he like doesn't want to drag up stuff like he doesn't want to bring drag people through the mud or drag up garbage from the past and stuff he's like he's very clear like there's no excuses for the choices that you make like he says that right away you guys there's no excuses for the choices you make you own it you own it like he's taking responsibility are you taking responsibility oh that's interesting he stops a little bit there's like this degree of you need to be responsible for your part in things is what he says for your part in things So there's controversy around your transition. And, and I, I, I personally have a really, I really struggle with that when I connect with afterlife spirits who have transitioned in circumstances that are like perceived as mysterious or there's not, everything isn't like perfectly uh, laid out so that everybody understands, you know, especially when people tragically leave and, and you were younger. So it wasn't like you, you know, had this full life and you know, you're 80 and left. So, but I have a hard time with the energy around this because then it creates like conspiracies and people get desperate for answers. And it's like, but why do you want answers for somebody else's life? You should be focusing on finding answers for your life, you know? And I feel very judgmental. I feel very judgmental about why, I don't understand why people need to know or, or believe something different than what the fact, what the, the, the situation, how the facts of the situation are presented. Why is that? Can you talk about that a little bit? Like he says, what, you mean conspiracies? Like he's smoking too, he just reaches forward. Again, spirits don't smoke per se, but it's a metaphysical thing that they're doing that's a metaphor to show that this is who he is in his life. So he's smoking and he's saying, he says, what, you mean conspiracies? You mean conspiracies like that? He kind of smiles, he chuckles. He says, like aliens abducting me. <laughs> he's like, like aliens? <laughs> like aliens oh well, you're a really nice guy like you genuinely feel like a nice person he says you sound surprised <laughs> well I kind of am a little bit because you know there's you know rock star image and image and some of the people that are like super pushy about talking to you a little bit and they're pushy there's some people that are pushy makes me feel like like are you this icon you know kind of a thing and if you're an icon like is there a part of you that's like that kind of vibe, you know? But you're not. You just seem like a nice, nice person. He's like, he says, he just kind of smiles like, okay. <laughs> like, is that supposed to be a compliment? Like, <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, um, I do want to talk about mental health. That's what he says too. He wants to talk about mental health, but um, that links to conspiracy stuff too uh, and circumstances around um, your, your leaving. He says, you know, this, he says, this is something that he said, it's not, he says, it's not hard to talk about. It's just, people just won't accept it's it's he's like it's like it's like the record industry they want to accept what you what you want to do what you have what here's the thing you know he's like they won't accept he says something in the record industry they won't accept the truth i almost he's making me feel like he wants to quit like, I don't know if he was touring or what was going on, but he's making me feel like he wants to quit and other people like contracts won't accept that he wants to quit. He's like, I'm like, so did you just need a break? He says, uh, did I have a break? <laughs> he says more like I had a break. He's saying I had a break. I had a break. He says like mental break. He's making me seem like he had a mental break from like reality is what he's showing me. I have a mental break from reality. Hmm. He says, I think it's easy for people to misunderstand or, or, you know, they're going to believe. He said, people are going to believe what they want to believe, and I'm not going to convince anybody of anything. He says, um, I just, I was in a bad way and I made a bad choice. And unfortunately, 
he's like my family. He's making me feel like, I don't know if he has a wife or a girlfriend. Um, I feel like he has a daughter. I, they had to suffer. Those I loved had to suffer, he says. So is there more to it than that? He said, not. He's like, would you want all the gory details? And he's like, you know, ash, boy, ash tray with this cigarette. No, I don't. I don't. No, thank you. You know, and he's like, he's like laughing. He says, I, he says, I wouldn't even tell you if you want. <laughs> he says, I am like, you wouldn't even tell me, would you? No, he says, no, no. He says, let's focus on, um, he says, let's do some good. That's what he says. Um, let's do some good. Let's do some good. Okay, so there's some, um, let's do some good, Michael Hutchins. Okay, so I got my glasses on here. Let's, I'm going to open up some questions. Oh, this is a lot about your death. He died supposedly alone under mysterious circumstances in a hotel room in 1997. He's like, sounds like a, like an album or a song or something, doesn't it? And he's like, doesn't it sound like a music video kind of a scene? I'm like, it does actually, yeah. Um, so this person's really focusing on your death and, and if it was a suicide or... Um, or something else. Oh, she says you have a drug problem. Okay, so you, I guess you had a drug problem. Mm. So did you commit suicide? He kind of looks down, he says, wow, it's really weird because I feel like, he's not pushing me away from the issue, but he's like, it's not that clear. It isn't that clear. When you're dealing with, okay, so he, his energy, what he's making me feel, is that it's not that clear when you're in that state you can't describe it to somebody is what he's making me feel like you can't describe it to somebody it's not like you're that clear-headed that you can make a choice to kill yourself like you're not if you're in that place and you feel so bad then obviously you're being overwhelmed or overpowered by your emotions is what he's showing me you're overpowered and he says so by by saying that by just by very the very nature of that the concept of suicide, it, it makes it seem like, you know, I, that I hated life and didn't want to be here. And that's not, that's not true. That's not the truth. I mean, life is hard, yes. And everybody deals with stuff that you don't know about. They're demons and things. And there's nobody in a place to judge. He says, there's nobody in a place to judge. There's nobody in a place to judge. So I'm getting the feeling though, um, Michael, that it's like a, there's this speculation that it was an accident and that you weren't trying to, 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 um, I even have a hard time with the word because I feel like you're not comfortable with it. It was not intentional is what he's saying. It's not, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't like this big plan that life was so bad that I've been planning to leave for months and months and years and years. it's not like that he's like but that's not what mental illness is when you're in a state of feeling so unbelievable he's like despair and just lost and he says you can't there's it feels like there's no other way to escape those feelings they're really heavy like he's really drugged down really drugged down he says, I, I don't want to, so there, okay, so now I'm feeling the point of why we were talking, because we don't want to make this, um, we don't want to glamorize this or glorify this, but we also want to make it very real that judgment or judging people who are dealing with incredible, insurmountable emotions is absolutely the wrong thing to be doing whether they attempted suicide or they're on medication or they're dealing with um, trauma and they have ups and downs. And he's showing me like, again, manic. I see both sides here. He says, there's no, there's no help. Judgment does not help anything. And categorizing people and, 
and putting them in boxes does not help. It does not help. It doesn't help. It doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make you better than somebody else because you in this moment don't have that problem. Everybody's got problems, he says. He's really, okay, now here comes energy, okay. He's like, okay, Michael Hutchins from NXS, okay, here he is. He's like saying, okay, here's the deal. Everybody's got problems. We gotta stop making this a bad thing that people, that, that, that everybody, there's no, it, it's mysterious. Emotions are mysterious and, and managing that is, is not cut and dry. It's not, it's not easy for anybody. And people act like they are, they're, they're faking it. They're faking it, they're faking it. It's not easy. It's not easy. And we have to start acting like, oh, they're like, he's okay, so I can't find the right words, but he's like less than. People that have depression or anxiety, they're less than. There's something wrong with them. Or people that want to jump into that, oh, I have that, I have that. And so that all of a sudden becomes like a bubble of energy that protects them. It's not, it does not protect you, he says. It's not, it does not protect you. Anxiety does not protect you. His thing, I'm not feeling anxiety. I'm feeling more of a depression, which is very heavy and underground, deep. Like he is definite. Like it's like severe. It's like crash and burn. Almost like literally that. He's showing me like crash and burn, like deep into the earth. Like the airplane crashes and it's like underneath the soil, not even at the top. Like you can't even see flames because it's just inside buried. That's what he's making me feel like. It's going okay for a while, things are getting good, and then boom, you know, and he's like, you can't predict this stuff. Like, you can't, you gotta like, you gotta know yourself. You, you gotta know yourself, and you gotta, gotta be able to talk yourself out of those hard feelings. And then surround yourself with people, he's saying support system, support network, so that you're not alone when you have those kinds of, of feelings or thoughts or, you know, that where this might be a good idea, then you need to make sure that oh, this isn't a good idea. You need to have that other part that says, hey, that questions that within yourself, he says, you got to you got to be able to do that. And that's not easy to do. And we we got to talk to people more about being able to do that. Talking yourself down is what kind of what he's showing me talking yourself to talking to yourself to get yourself to a place where you can reach out for help and get out of whatever the, the, the frame of mind, the state that you're in. And he's not saying it's very clearly not just the mind, it's like this feeling thing. And, but he's like, really like, hey, this isn't about judgment or classifying, oh, my death is this and so therefore I am. And he's like, it's not, it's not. Stop with the labels. He's like, no, stop with the labels. You gotta stop, you gotta stop that. that does, is it an excuse? Is it uh, a protection or is it something that you're going to use and say, hey, this is information I know about myself that I have this tendency. I know this about myself. So then I need to work within myself. He's like meditation, Bridget. He's like, it works. It works. It works. If people would do it, it works. It works. It really works because it quiets you inside without it being a scary quiet. When you're addicted to, when you're like doing drugs or you're having addiction and you go into a dark place, it's to calm things, but it's like, a, it's like a lie. It's a myth, it's not real. And, and when you do something like a meditation where you can get to a place where you can feel at rest, it, it's exactly what people are searching for when, when they're, they're spinning out of control of their emotions and the energy, you know? He's like, it's, it's really, it really works. He's saying it really works. I'm not, okay, so I'm not, like right now, I'm not like deep into my meditations. Like I do them usually daily, but it's not, it's like a, it's not like a deep quiet. Like he's making me feel like transcendental meditation, which is a form of meditation, TM meditation, which is deep. Like you just quiet, you're totally quiet, like twice a day, 20 minutes a time, and you go in and you come out and it's a commitment, you guys. But if you're in a situation where you have addiction, you're dealing with intense you know, anxiety or depression and or manic episodes, 
he's literally saying that meditation can help you find that rest inside you that gives you a place then that to go that's safe inside you because he says you got to understand that when you have like voices in your head or when you feel so bad he's like you've not feel, felt like this Bridget he's like you've not felt like this he's like when you feel so bad that there's just nothing there's nothing he says you can't you can't trust yourself anymore you can't there's no connection at all even to yourself at all even even to yourself there's no part of you that's worth the connection and when you do something like a meditation, like the Tia meditation, he says, you can, you can really, um, I'm going to use the word foster that commitment, that relationship. He said, you can really build that relationship with yourself. And that's like trust. And that's, that's what matters. Like you, that can help you. That can save you. That can save you. So I say a lot of yellow energy, which is spirit, solar plexus, your intuition. Solar plexus is the chakra at your belly, which is your, where your intuition is. So he's showing me yellow, a lot of yellow. It's like daisies, mm -hmm. a lot of yellow energy. That was big. Okay, let me just see. I got to make sure there's another person that has asked like questions. Let's see. Oh, um, somebody's asking about some biopic that was out about you that I've never, wa I haven't watched, so I don't really know anything about that. Um, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, this person's asking about a specific event that you supposedly, um, hit a taxi driver and, oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, okay. I'm just going to read exactly what this person uh, says and asks. He says, he, you, was clocked by a taxi driver, <laughs> hit and hit your head on the concrete, how did that affect you? And did it contribute to the accident or your end of your life? Interesting. He says, yeah, see, he says, it's like trying to put the pieces together. He says, you can't put pieces together. It's like, he says, it's like when you drop like grandma's picture, he says like a beautiful, he's showing me like this gorgeous picture. And it's like super old, like 100 years old. And you drop it on the floor and it just shatters into a million pieces. Um, you're not going to get on your, your hands and knees and pick up all these little pieces and try to glue them back together. There's going to be stuff that's missing. It's never going to look the same. It's never going to be the same. And he's like, so you're trying to like make sense of something that it can't be put, you can't put it back together is what he's saying. You can't put it back together. You're not going to understand. You're just not. You're not. And you guys, that's what grief is. You're not going to understand somebody else's grief or why they did what they did. And answers don't, to exactly know all the details doesn't make you feel any better. It doesn't automatically release the grief. It might be a temporary, oh, I feel better. And then all of a sudden, there's your grief again, you know. So, I mean, I've done enough mediumship over my lifetime here, like the last 17 years now. This year is my 17th year as a psychic medium and as a woke psychic medium that I knew that I was actually doing that I just thought everybody talked to dead people like I thought it was no big deal <laughs> so I understand that I've dealt with a lot of grief myself my own personal grief and then those around me and people um, in session so I understand that grief process is not something that has an expiration date it just doesn't all right so oh he says you do have a daughter Oh, interesting. He says, um, this person that asked the question, he says, um, your solo music is being rediscovered. How do you feel about that? He says, well, anytime. He's like, anytime. He's like, oh, it's good. He's good. It's good. He's like, anytime you, you know, can leave an impression. This as long as it's a good one, he says. As long as it's a good one. As long as it, so long. He literally says, he talks a little bit differently. His words are different when I really feel into him. So he says, so long as it's a good one, a good impression, he said. He kind of, he always looks down. He looks down a lot. It's like these eyes, his eyes are like very <laughs> piercing. Like he looks up and he's like, I'm like, okay, whoa, dude, serious eyes. Um, and then he says, um, this person asks, oh, you do have a daughter. Hey, he says something about your daughter, Tiger Lily. Oh, interesting. 
Um, let's see. Apparently there's some stuff about money after your death and all this, and it's so funny. So let me just interject here. When there's anything to do with an estate, the spirit usually doesn't really have a lot of interest because there's no material connection. <laughs> it's like things are going to sort out the way they need to sort out for all the people that are left in human bodies that need to have the material things, the money, the this, the that. As long as they have the love and the energy of the love connected, that's the treasure. Like that's the abundance. That's the money. Like that's the, that's the win, the score. Okay. So there's not really an attachment. It's hard to describe that to people because I myself too, I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't you be mad? Well, if I was a person, this wouldn't even be happening in the first place. It's kind of like, he's kind of like, what? Like it's a moot point is the energy. Okay. I, I can appreciate why you would ask that though, because that's a parent and stuff. And I mean, I can understand that as a person for sure. I don't mean to be curt about my responses, but I can. And he's just like, shuts me down. like, <laughs> Nothing really can do about that. What am I going to do about it? He's like, what am I supposed to, what am I, am I supposed to be doing something about that? That's, that's her path, you know? Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, he says something about, um, okay, so here's another question. Your bandmates say that when they get together from time to time, that strange weather occurs, lightning and such and that they believe Michael has not passed yet and that they feel your presence. He says, please ask if that's true. No, no, no. He's like, yeah. He's like, you can be in more places than, he says, yeah, yeah. You gotta, gotta get out of your brain a little bit. He says, um, I don't have the, the limits that you guys do. He says, I don't have a body. I don't have the mind. I don't have to only be in one place. How, how do you describe God? How do you describe love? How do you describe the universe? How do you describe, yeah, he says, um, yeah, I visit. Yeah, I can visit, I can visit. They know, they know when it's me. He's like, we, you know, that's what we would expect from each other. You know, he's making me joking around and doing stuff and whatever. He's like, you know, in times when they've had rough times, he's showing me one person in particular, somebody that was really close to him has had some rough times. I don't know if he's actually, He's had some, I don't know if he's in the afterlife or not, has had some really rough times and that he's been there for him um, through dreams, dreams a lot. He says he connects through the dream state, but, but he said, but that's not like you guys, there's no limitation. The spirit is like rays of a sun, just like archangels, like an archangel isn't just with one person in the entire world. You know, your deities, your saints, your God, goddess aspects, they transcend their energy. They're not a body. They were a body. They've had a body, but they're not confined by the body or the mind restrictions. And the mind and the body is what holds this, this container of life, of our perception and our views of life. And so I hope that helps. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for your questions, you guys. That was from a couple of different, I think two or three different viewers. I've been, I've been thinking about this one. Um, you guys know that I step away from controversy if it's like a conspiracy-like thing and stuff. It just, I just don't want to focus on the drama of stuff. I want to honor the life, you know. So, Michael, it's been, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, like I could totally hang out with him. And he's funny, you guys. He has a bit of a sense of humor and like he literally feels like he's sitting on the edge of like a little brick wall and he's like gonna fall off it and stuff. Like, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Like I'm not so uh, suave or whatever. He's like, I'm not, I'm not that savvy, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'm not that savvy. So, all right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And thank you here for watching this channeling session with Michael Hutchins from the band NXS on Above Life channel. I'm Bridget, I'm your host here. I'm a psychic medium and an intuitive life coach. Be sure that before you leave, you take some time to kind of browse the channel. There's a lot of other playlists that you might very well enjoy and get inspired. The whole point here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. This is your life after all, so don't waste it, okay? Live it, just live it. Thanks for being here.